Hi guys, welcome back to the second hour of the Tom O'Brien Show, and uh, it's good to be here. I'm John Logan. I do a show every morning on the TFNN Network from 8 to 9, the Global Market Pulse, and uh, you guys are always welcome to drop by. Cover quite a bit in the morning. Try to get you ready before the market's open, the stock market that is, and um, it's always good to have guests on my show, and we're honored today to have Andy Hecht on in the, I guess, start of the next segment. Looking forward to that. I learned a ton every time I listen to Andy's show. And um, I'm going to be looking forward to some of the fundamental comments and technical comments that he's got about, you know, the, the usual suspects of the commodity world. And uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later. We're taking a look at Apple right now for folks who are in the car. And uh, if, you, if you could see the screen, I'm showing Apple right now on a, on a daily chart. And what the premise is here Going back to our weekly for a second, looking at the long-term view, you know, Apple, the spine was broken on this stock back in uh, July of 2015. And what do I mean by that? That means that, you know, the market had made some new kind of moves up and Apple was kind of languishing here within long-term profiles, our long-term balanced areas. Then we started finally trading below balanced areas for the first time in God knows when, really, back in that time frame, July 2015, so that was about a year ago. Now we've been in a protracted downtrend as the market's kind of ramped up and compressed up into these, you know, trying to get up through these all-time highs again. Apple has continued to make lower highs and actually lower lows. And what's going on right now is even though we're within a balanced area here, on our long-term view, if I go into our scanner and I look at Apple, what I see there is I'm showing bottom of our daily profile. I'm seeing a red there, and I'm seeing a one. And that means that we're just starting to get past the precipice again of the next you know, time frame across, which we always use to kind of regulate the trade in the way of the trend itself that's currently in force. That being said, the new pressure point here is as the markets kind of drag this up after Brexit, is 95.12, and that's what I'm looking at now as a chance to let me get this out of the way here, as a chance to look at this as, okay, we've made another leg down, we're rallying back up, the market's dragged it up, and Apple, in my opinion, is not on sale down here. It's continuing to do the new lows, not wanting to break out on the upside, rallying back up into areas of resistance that we can pay attention to and actually, more importantly, play defense against. So as we look at this, you know, you could look at this as, well, wow, Apple's made higher lows here on the intermediate on the daily. But when you kind of step back and really look at what's going on and put that relative strength concept into it that the market, you know, may have just kind of rising tides lifts all boats lately for Apple, it's not a lot of not a lot of uh, interest in the stock. So when we start seeing a full-blown breakout getting above it, either intermediate or long-term profiles, it might be okay to get back in the water for this thing. But right now, all things considered, it's an ugly situation still. So fundamentally, I don't you know, know all the ins and outs on the fundamentals of Apple right now, but technically speaking, looking at who's raising their hand right now, not wanting to be bought in a big way, it's Apple. So we're going to take a look at another one that's, that's really been bouncing around a lot lately. Tesla, it seems to be just completely news-driven. actually had a, a break in stride here. Uh, here's our long-term view on Tesla. That was a big number, 233, after we broke down and went back and retraced back up into that area. And, and now, you know, Tesla obviously is broken above these daily profiles. 202 now is going to be support on this, but you got a massive lit, massive lid on this at 233. So, you know, we're kind of smack dab in the middle of that. We're trading about 213 right now. What do you do with Tesla? Do you go in and buy it? I don't really look at buying something until we're, you know, at least hovering or coming down into support or conversely rallying up into resistance if we're in a defined trend. And right now, you know, What's the defined trend of Tesla? You you look back in time, and we've basically have been just kind of bouncing around between 300 and 150 for a long time. 
And right now, you've kind of got a mixed bag as far as our long-term view and our intermediate view. So, again, I think you, you've got a range-bound situation, situation from around 200 up into 233, and I think you've got to be buying at 200 and selling at 233 on Tesla. All right, so let's take a look at... Uh, I'm sorry, I topped in the wrong stock there. Let's take a look at Amazon. We're going to hit Facebook really quick, too. Seems like these are in everybody's portfolio here. Now, Amazon, you know, the Brexit situation kind of dragged this into, and we've got a scanner that really helps identify these areas. 678 got into that neighborhood. Now we're compressing back up into 731.50. I think we closed today at uh, 729. So... This is a stock you really are playing with fire trying to short this because every time the market pulls back, it kind of tells you, all right, well, we've got a support area we can pay attention to. We're still in a defined uptrend. Very, very different from the Apple situation. And you have a relative, relatively strong stock that doesn't want to get away from, even on a day like today, we're positive today, doesn't even want to get away from these all-time highs, which are also coupled with our weekly unfair highs, which means that is that resistance in the short term? Possibly, but any breakouts above there, you got to be looking, at, again, using that to play defense as you were able to buy these 678 areas because you're buying a strong stock in a market that's kind of dragging it down into support areas. So again, this is nothing to, to look at that's too high, just like you can't look at Apple, it's too low. Things in their lows go lower, things in their highs go higher. And when you have some market relevance factored in, um, you know, you can play those things against each other and try to find opportunities, and that's what Scanner does for me. So Facebook, again, you know, the weekly, we kind of rallied up close to above these unfair highs last week, around 113.64. Now we're kind of spinning around there. You know, market could drag this thing down, but uh, again, when you're when you're playing a relative strength, relative weakness game, you want to play defense with the stocks in this case that are going to be as least painful. If the market just doesn't on uh, just a massive pullback, you know, you want to be long stocks that are not going to pull back that much, and and you know, short stocks that are already showing their hands. So, Facebook, not not a situation I'd like to be short, no matter what. We're going to take a look at another stock and uh, go to break in just a second here. And when we come back, we're going to take a, a stroll down Commodities Lane with Andy Heck. We'll be right back, guys.